All right, I think we can go ahead and um, get things started here tonight. So um, first of all, welcome everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We're really excited to talk about our um, health outcomes and pharmacoeconomics program, as well as our UC online learning platform. Um, so my name is Abby Sparks. I am our enrollment services advisor for our health outcomes and pharmacoeconomics program. Um, I will be partially presenting tonight as well as um, Dr. Anna Hickapee, Hickapee um, who is our program director for this program. So we're really excited to be here to um, share information about the program um, and just talk about uh, UC Online. So just to give um, just kind of a brief overview for tonight, um, first of all, this session will be recorded um, and everyone is on mute. So um, if you do have questions, we definitely encourage you to post those questions in the Q&A function of the meeting. And we will be answering those questions towards the end of the session. Um, so tonight we will be covering the um, learning outcomes as well as some program highlights for our health outcomes program. Um, we'll talk about some details of the curriculum um, as well as the admissions requirements. Um, we'll cover some different career outlooks. We'll answer some questions about financial aid. We'll talk about our academic calendar here at UC. Um, and then just cover some highlights about, you know, why you see online, um, as well as, again, we'll be answering questions at the end of the session. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our program director, um, Dr. Hinkapee. Thank you, Abby, and welcome everyone um, for attending this presentation. Very excited to have you here tonight. Um, and if you uh, have multiple questions that we can answer tonight, feel free to reach out. Uh, my contact information will be shared at the end of this uh, presentation. So I'll be happy to answer any questions. I am an associate professor at the James L. Winkle College of Pharmacy at the University of Cincinnati. I've been a faculty here for almost eight years and um, I'm also the program director for this program. So very excited about this. So this program, this master's in health outcomes or pharmacoeconomics is designed uh, for um, students that wants to uh, work in the health outcomes area. And we hope that at the end of this program, students will be able to apply quantitative analytics and methods in health outcomes, whether it's in pharmaceutical industry or healthcare recognize the regulatory, legal, clinical, commercial purpose of, of health outcome evidence, understand where that evidence comes from, generate evidence uh, with the purpose of decision-making uh, by key stakeholders in industry and healthcare settings, and interpret, present, and disseminate analysis of health outcome studies in and the pol policy implications for a diverse uh, stakeholder groups. Next. So our program, um, it's taught by a very diverse group of faculty internationally recognized with diverse experience in the field of health outcomes and pharmacoeconomics, in addition to drug development. Um, this faculty is active in participating in multiple international professional organizations. Therefore, they are up to date or what are they current? Um, changes in the field of health outcomes and pharmacoeconomics. What is interesting about the program is that it is 100% online and it's designed uh, for working professionals. So there could be a full-time option or a part-time option to complete this program. And additionally, this program is customizable and offers multiple interdisciplinary courses. So not only students from pharmacy, but we have students from other healthcare um, programs in the university that can join in this in this master's program, which means that this creates an environment of um, collaboration and understanding experiences and health outcomes from different healthcare professionals. Next. So our curriculum, as I mentioned, is uh, customizable. However, there are three areas that oversee or we classify the courses in our curriculum. The first one is 
courses related with outcomes policy and economics in healthcare and pharmacy, courses related to data analytics, and courses related to regulatory affairs and drug development. The courses that are um, shaded here in a darker red are core courses. So all the students in this master programs need to complete and successfully pass these courses. However, we offer a diverse number of electives in each one of these categories. Um, and the students have the option to select those electives based on their preferences or their career outlook. So it's very customizable in that sense. In addition, at the end of the program in the last semester, students are required to complete a capstone project during one, one semester. This capstone project is designed to demonstrate understanding of the skills acquired during the master programs. It's a project that has to be able to be completed during one semester. And, um, after, and that would be the culmination of, of this master's program. Uh, next. So now, um, once the, the, a lot of the, most of the potential students and students questions that we have, it's about, well, what can I do with this career outlook, with, with this program and what's my career outlook? And, and the career path will depend on your previous experience in healthcare or in industry. But once you have the skills that you will acquire with these programs, you can um, be successful in different positions, either in industry and healthcare. So in industry, it could be either in research for drug or medical devices as health outcomes analysts, research consultants, or if you are more interested of high ex experience in healthcare, you can work in consulting, um, in hospitals, in health plans, as health plan managers, clinical research coordinators, um, medical device coordinator, et cetera. So there are different opportunities and options for the graduates of these programs to um, find jobs. Next. So the requirements to be admitted in this master's programs are presented here. So students uh, should have a bachelor's degree. Uh, we are very, um, we have different options for that bachelor's degree requirement. So students could have a degree in biology, in chemistry, or any healthcare profession. In addition, we accept the students that have a background in health science, economics, or a business degree. When the students have a bachelor's in um, a science-related degree or business, it helps if the students have a previous experience in healthcare or have an understanding of healthcare or clinical experience. And one way to demonstrate that during the application process is through um, your curriculum and through your statement of purpose. In addition, we require a 3.0 GPA. And then if you're an international student, uh, an English test requirement, um, it needs to be completed. Yeah, so in addition to those materials, um, we will also require an updated copy of your resume. And again, being sure to highlight any experience in the healthcare industry, clinical research, or those related fields. Um, we will also need your unofficial transcripts from any college level institution that you've attended. Um, you'll also write a statement of purpose with your application. And the statement of purpose is really an opportunity for you to write about who you are, uh, tell us about your background, um, talk about your goals and what you're looking to get out of this program and how this program would help you achieve those goals. You will also need to provide uh, two professional references. And we do ask that these um, letters of recommendation from the references be from academic references or professional references. Um, and we, as enrollment services advisors, we are here to help you and support you throughout the application process. So if you have additional questions about the application process or these required materials, I definitely encourage you to reach out to your enrollment advisor. Um, we're happy to support you throughout that process. Um, I also wanted to mention that the application fee for um, this program is currently being waived. 
So you're welcome to get an application started at no cost to you. All right, so um, the next important piece here is to cover finances and scholarships. Um, so first of all, if you are someone that is eligible for military benefits, um, please be sure that you're mentioning that to your enrollment services advisor, and we can help answer any of those questions and also make sure that you have the contact for um, our military contacts here at the University of Cincinnati. We also recommend that you consult your um, regional VA representative just to determine um, the benefits that you have to see what they will cover for this program. We do also have a couple options for payment plans. So um, how it typically works is payment for your program is due um, per semester and it's due a couple days before the semester starts. Um, if you would like, we have different payment plans that will break up those payments into smaller payments throughout the semester as opposed to paying for each semester at a time. Um, so we do have a few of those that you can explore as well. Um, and we also do have a um, scholarship for this program called the Taylor Frank Fund. Um, this is a scholarship that you would be applicable to apply for after you have applied for the program. So your first step is still to get an application started for the program. Um, and then you would be eligible to also apply for this Taylor Frank Fund program scholarship. Another good scholarship opportunity that we offer is called our University to Business Partnership Scholarship Program. So what this is, is the University of Cincinnati has an opportunity where we can partner with your employer to set up a partnership scholarship program. What this is, is it's a um, tuition scholarship that would be available to employees, their spouses or partners, and all dependents living in that household under the age of 25. So it would be a scholarship that would be applicable to you for all of our you know, 100 plus online programs. And that includes different certificates, associate's degrees, bachelor's and master's level programs. Um, if you're interested in this, this is a really great opportunity to get an additional scholarship towards our program. All we would need is to get into contact with someone in your HR department. So this is something that you should definitely um, discuss with your enrollment services advisor so we can talk about making that connection and setting up that scholarship for you. Um, and lastly, with this as well, you know, our enrollment services advisors are here to help with um, all of those application materials. We're here to help talk about these different scholarship opportunities, the finances, and really just support you along the way. Um, you, we do also have student success coordinators that will also help you stay on track with all of this as well throughout the life of the program. Okay, so taking a look at our um, upcoming academic calendar. So a nice thing about this program is that um, you do have the option to start during our spring, summer, or fall semester. We do operate during all of these semesters. Um, our next upcoming semester would be spring. So our application deadline for that is going to be uh, this December, December 15th, with classes starting January 9th. If you were interested in getting started this summer, you have the option to do that as well. The app deadline for summer is gonna be April 30th with classes starting on May 8th. And then if you wanted to start in the fall, you can do that as well. Our fall deadline is gonna be August 15th with classes starting on August 22nd. And then why you see online. Um, so with being a uh, student of UC online, you would get all of the same you know, accreditations, ranks, and highlights that the University of Cincinnati has. Um, I know a question that we get asked a lot is, you know, will my diploma say online? Um, it will not. It will just say the University of Cincinnati. So all of the perks and benef benefits and accreditations that apply to our on-campus University of Cincinnati stay true to our online programs as well. Um, you'll be eligible to 
um, get all of that support that you would. Same if you were in uh, on campus student, you'll have access to um, different support tools such as our library. Um, there's some mentoring and tutoring opportunities that you'll have access to as well. Um, as well as having a student success coordinator that will work with you one on one throughout the program. Um, so you'll have that personalized support, you'll have that network of different resources, tools and opportunities to support you along the way. Um, another good perk about UC online is that um, our program material is asynchronous, meaning that you can access it at any day or time that works for you. We have students from all over the country and sometimes from all around the world that enroll in these programs. So um, it's nice that you know everything is 100% online. You can access the material at whatever works best for you um, because these programs really are built to keep you know, the working professional in mind. So you'll be able to work full time and also be successful in our programs as well. All right, so um, again, we just wanna thank you all for your time for joining us tonight. Um, as a reminder, the application fee has been waived, so you're welcome to get an application started at no cost to you. Um, any questions that you have, we will open it up here in just a second for Q&A, um, but you can always reach out to your enrollment services advisor, myself, or Dr. Hinkapi as well. We are more than happy to help answer any of your questions. Um, but with that, let's turn it over to some Q&A. If anybody has any questions, um, feel free to post those in the Q&A chat. Down. Yes, and I see two questions, so I am going to um, eh, try to answer um, those two. So the, the first question is, if you're doing a master's in health economics and outcomes research, may, uh, how many credits can be transferred to the, this particular program? So the general answer to that is that students can transfer up to one third of credits from other institutions into this program. So for a master's program, this particular program is 33 credits, so you could transfer around 10 credits. Now, there are a specific rules that uh, for more specific questions, I um, invite you to email me directly. For example, how long ago these credits were taken. So there are other specific requirements that the graduate school um, reviews when granting the transfer of these credits. The second question is about the difference between health outcomes and research and health economics and uh, versus health outcomes research and pharmacoeconomics. So the tools and the principles are the same. Um, and I guess we call it pharmacoeconomics because we are hosted in the pharmacy school and our focus is understanding and evaluating the value of drug therapies. And as you've seen in, in our curriculum, uh, some of the courses are related to regulatory affairs uh, for drugs and medical devices. So we have an emphasis in drug therapies, but the principles are economics principles that can be applied. So I guess to answer that, it really depends on where the program is hosted. If it's hosted in a health professions um, program, they, they might focus on public health. And so they will apply these principles into health, public health programs. We are applying these principles with an emphasis in um, drug therapies. Um, the next question is, uh, what percent of students in these programs have uh, only a bachelor's degree? Um, a, or are not pursuing another graduate degree. Um, so I will have to ask and I will have to get back to you on the answers to this specific um, question in terms of numbers. But I, I, I do wanna emphasize that this area is a, a hot topic right now. And there are lots of jobs of people that have ex, um, experience in health outcomes. Um, and if you are following the news, you probably have seen um, the laws about the Inflation, Inflation Act that just passed by the federal government, 
which will increase the demand for people in industry and healthcare areas with this skill. So, but I, I will, Abby and I will make sure that we'll get back to you with the specific numbers for your question. The next question is about whether are the classes uh, webinar based or course materials that you access and read and take the exams. Um, so it's a combination of both. So um, our online courses have um, are I created in modules. So each week is a module, and you complete your module at your own pace. There are presentations via webinar that are pre-recorded. So the program is asynchronous and you can complete and, and watch those videos at your own convenience. And, but also there are required readings and homework assignments um, and, and quizzes and exams that are um, required during each week. So each week you can decide when you do all of those, but you have to move along um, during the course for those um, weeks that you're taking the specific course. So it's a combination of, of, of all of the above, but all of the programs are asynchronous. Uh, and, and then how are, the next question is, how are courses offering this program? Do you have to take one course at a time or more than one course at a time? Um, yeah, you can, you can take more than one course at a time. So if you are a full-time student, you can finish this program in one year. And by full-time student, um, I mean, and I'm saying taking around 12 credits. And if you are a part-time student, you can take one or two courses each semester, and then you will complete this program in one year and a half if you take courses during the summer, or perhaps two years if you don't take courses during the summer. So you, yes, you can, you can take uh, courses at the same time or just one at a time. And there was another uh, question, uh, let me see. Uh, I think that's all the questions that I see on the chat. I know um, a question that we get sometimes talking to students is, um, do you have to be a pharmacist to um, go through this program? Oh, no, you don't have to be a pharmacist. At, again, one of the requirements, the only requirement really is to have a bachelor's degree and the bachelor's degree could be in a healthcare related field, but it also could be in business or economics uh, or to science. Uh, however, uh, we prefer for those bachelors um, to have a little bit of your healthcare experience or, uh, or a pharmacy, uh, pharmaceutical industry experience. I know another question that we do often get talking to students is um, really just asking about careers after this program and maybe what some alumni um, are doing um, with this um, program or in those related fields? Yeah, I, I think uh, most of the alumni work either for pharmaceutical industry at different roles. They could work, and, and, and the specific roles will depend on the previous healthcare experience that the students bring in um, and, or, or, or whether they don't have previous healthcare experience. Uh, if the students um, have a PharmD degree, they could work in, in uh, after getting this degree, they could work as medical science liaison, but if they don't, they could also work uh, in the health outcomes departments. They are also known as um, real world evidence departments at pharmaceutical industries. Um, if they work in uh, health plans, they could assist in program design for drug coverage, for example, or just in general medical coverage um, program design. They can work in hospitals if they can um, participate in a PNT um, committees to develop the formulary for the hospitals. Um, they can just, if they really have an interest and a passion for data analytics, they can dedicate their career on data analytics as well. So there are different different areas um, that the students can take with this with this degree. Awesome, thank you for that.
Well, um, I don't see that we have any other questions out there remaining, but again, we wanna thank you all um, for your time this evening. If you have um, questions or you wanted to discuss this further, like I mentioned, uh, you may already be working with an enrollment services advisor. Um, so feel free to bring up those questions to them, um, or you can contact myself or Dr. Hinkapi as well. But yeah, thank you all for your time and um, have a lovely evening.